One of the things that I, I hear often, uh, and, and I think there's a lot of confusion on, and I, I myself don't fully understand, C- can you talk about the difference between the, the DISA, Defense Information Systems Agency, Systems Agency SRG, um, impact levels versus FedRAMP? Sure, um, I can take that one also. So um, DISA Security Requirements Guide and FedRAMP impact levels are actually both based on confidentiality, integrity, and availability um, of information that's being processed, stored, or transmitted across an information system. Um, So both are looking at protecting your CIA CIA there. Um, The Department of Defense uses, um, it kind of mirrors a process with FedRAMP called FedRAMP Plus, um, which leverages the FedRAMP assessment and authorization process and adds additional specific security controls and requirements to meet the DOD security requirements. Um, I can break that down a little bit further um, if we have time. Um, So again, both FedRAMP and uh, the DISA SRG are concerned about um, protecting your confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and the sensitivity level of the information being stored and processed and really what the potential impact could be if um, an information system was compromised or or if if the data were compromised. Um, So with the DISA SRG, they have four impact levels, IL-2, IL-4, IL-5, and IL-6. IL-2 is going to be your public or non-critical mission information any cloud products or services that have been issued a FedRAMP authorization at the moderate level are automatically given the, the DOD IL-2 stamp, if you will. Um, there's reciprocity there. Um, that's going to be the lowest impact level, and it's really concerned with the data for public use. After that, um, there there's IL-4. This is what we see a lot of um, clients and companies asking us to help with. Um, And that's going to include information dealing with controlled unclassified information or CUI or non-CUI, non-critical mission information and non-national security systems. Um, And then leveraging the FedRAMP process with that for a FedRAMP Plus, um, it would include the 325 moderate controls from the FedRAMP um, moderate package plus an additional 35 controls um, from the DOD cloud requirements. So um, not too many extra added there, but again, 325 plus an additional 35. And then IL-5, that's higher sensitivity, controlled unclassified information, mission critical information, and dealing with national security systems. Um, FedRAMP plus there would be, again, the the moderate package plus 44 additional SRG controls um, added there. And then lastly, the IL-6 is for your classified or secret data um, and national security of systems. Um, That's your highest impact level and covers, obviously, classified national security information. Um, That, again, is going to be an additional 44 SRG controls and then also 98 controls from the classified overlay. So a lot of controls to take care of there for your DOD IL-6. And then for FedRAMP impact levels, um, since we're talking FedRAMP, there's three impact risk levels, low, moderate, or high. Low, uh, again, is going to encompass data that's really intended for mass or public consumption. Um, Any loss of the integrity, availability, or confidentiality there is not going to be detrimental to any sort of agency mission. Um, So that's low. Moderate, which we see mostly, is um, going to include data that's not available to the public. So this is appropriate um, for, for systems that there could be like a mild impact on the government agencies mission if it were to be compromised. A good example is personally identifiable information or PII. Um, That's a good example of data you'd want to protect and a moderate um, impact risk level would cover that. And then lastly, the high impact risk. Uh, These are most notably found in like law enforcement, healthcare, or emergency services. 
um, that really require that strong protection of strong protection and handling of, of sensitive data there. Um, so hopefully that answers that question for you. Yeah, that's a lot to uh, a lot to unpack. So let me <laughs> I, I'm going to try and, and, and see if I can uh, summarize. Um, so so both and, and jump in here if I if I miss summarize this. So um, if I if my notes are correct, both DISA, SRG and FedRAMP apply to cloud services um, being sold to the government. Um, on the FedRAMP side, you have low, moderate, and high. Um, but uh, the the DISA side specifies, um, and, and with that low, moderate, and high, you have you know it's it's based on is it NIST 853 the security controls. Um, yes. So you, so you have the security controls you have to do there. FedRAMP moderate comes with impact level two, DISA impact level two, um, which is suitable for you know, public unclassified type information. But, um, you know, in today's world where, where CUI or controlled unclassified information is thrown around quite a bit because of CMMC. And, and I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the uh, intelligence uh, agencies kind of asking for the rescinding of the, the CUI order um, last week um, seems to be a hot topic. But if you want to store CUI as a government uh, agency, you have to have um, an impact level four, potentially five, uh, system and so if you're a if you're a csp getting ready to sell to the government um you know you'd want to to look at maybe doing the fed ramp plus if it's going to store controlled unclassified information is what you're saying right exactly. and then impact level six is uh you're getting into the the secret world and um and classified world and there's uh, more controls as you go up okay i, I think i got it <laughs> 